Welcome to CTSC Online. CTSC Online is an ongoing series of videos discussing various aspects of cybersecurity with specific application to NSF-funded cyber infrastructure projects. CTSC Online is made possible by funding from NSF. Building a Cybersecurity Program, a tutorial for managers and PIs. In this video, we will look at a cybersecurity case study. Scientific cyber infrastructure brings unique challenges for cybersecurity due to its open nature, use of unique instruments, large and complex data sets, and rich ecosystems of collaboration across countries and between disciplines. NSF has as a goal the creation of high-quality, trustworthy cyber infrastructure to support high-quality, trustworthy science. However, the community faces a real challenge in accessing needed expertise in a timely fashion. The Center for Trustworthy Scientific Cyber Infrastructure, CTSC, is comprised of cybersecurity experts who have spent decades working with science and engineering communities and have an established track record of usable, high-quality solutions suited to the needs of those communities. The team draws from the best operational practices and includes leaders in the research and development of new methodologies and high-quality implementations. CTSC will address this challenge for meeting the needs of individual cyber infrastructure projects through deep engagements, training, and dissemination of experiences. At the same time, CTSC will advance the state of cybersecurity practice across the community by analyzing gaps in cybersecurity technology to provide guidance to researchers and developers, addressing the application of software assessment to complicated cyber infrastructure software stacks, and fostering broadly the transition of cybersecurity research to practice. Developing a cybersecurity plan can be a very confusing and involved process. There is no one right way to create one. There are a number of frameworks available that can be used, but these are usually intended for big organizations and not small projects. CTSC is a small project and yet has a great need for a secure environment. Since the project is supposed to be providing security expertise to the NSF CI community, it would be very embarrassing to have some kind of security incident in our own system. We looked at some of the available frameworks, like NIST and Octave, but quickly found they were too involved for what we were trying to do. We ended up taking a hybrid approach to the creation of our plan. We started with a system characterization looking specifically at the assets we had. Taking an asset-based approach helped us to stay focused on what we were trying to protect. As part of developing our asset list, we were able to identify the vulnerabilities that were found in each asset. With this information, we were then able to identify threats that could affect each asset. A threat assessment was then performed to prioritize each threat and the risk it presented. With this work done, it was then possible to develop a plan. As mentioned, the first step was performing a system characterization. This step is extremely important. During this step, you define what the system is and what aspect of the system you will be addressing during the rest of the process. During this step, you will gather information about the system's hardware, software, system interfaces, data and information, people, system mission, use cases, and workflows. Basically, everything about the project you are working on and what is involved in that. The result of this work will be a good description of your project system with detailed information on all the pieces and parts that make up the system. This is crucial as you move through the remaining steps of the risk assessment. A good way to approach this step is by asking yourself the question, what am I trying to protect? The answers to this question begin to identify the parts of the system you need to worry about and start to gain a better understanding of that so that you can clearly identify the associated vulnerabilities and threats. The first thing we did when approaching our system characterization was to define our workflows and activities. Looking at these allowed us to understand what was going on in our system. These items help clarify how the system is used, how we and our users interact with the system. 
Looking at workflows also helps with identifying what is important to the system. What data or interfaces are people using? This information then becomes one of the key things we would want to protect. It was noted during this step that the main way people interacted through the CTSC was by using Google Docs. For the most part, CTSC produces documentation. These are in the form of white papers or risk assessments for projects we are doing engagements with. By identifying this interface, we quickly saw that the main asset that we had was the data and information gained by these engagements. Much of this was in the form of threat and vulnerability information on our engagement partners. The loss of this information could have dire effect on the security of our partners' systems. The other key asset was our reputation. CTSC is supposed to be a group of security professionals available to help CI projects develop good security practices. It would not look good if we became a statistic to a cybersecurity incident. Understanding who the users are is an important step. This helps in a few different ways. One obvious data point given with understanding this information is what type of users are accessing the system. Are these computer experts? Or are they people with limited skills who are unaware of security issues and practices? Another important piece of information from this is how people will be accessing the system. Will they be local or remote? Are there other institutions or agencies involved with this interface? Will that add additional security concerns? Understanding the people who are maintaining the system and using it is crucial to helping you understand the system itself. An important area to understand while performing the system characterization is that of what is the infrastructure you are really responsible for. This is an important point to remember when working through the system characterization. One of its goals is to define the boundaries of the assessment. As we can see with the example of the CTSC system characterization, most of the infrastructure that CTSC is responsible for is not under our control. The majority of the servers and storage is in off-site third-party locations and control. Therefore, these fall outside of the need for an internal assessment. Another important point was the realization of just how many organizations were being interfaced with. CTSC is made up of individuals from a number of universities. This can complicate system interactions and security concerns. Again, these organizations do not have to be assessed during the process because it can be assumed that they perform their own assessments. However, the interfaces have to be understood and dealt with. Understanding the communities that a project deals with is similar to understanding staff demographics. However, unlike individuals, organizations might bring different or competing goals and requirements to a system. If there are compliance issues or regulatory concerns that need to be addressed because of an organization, these needs need to be called out in the security plan. In the case of CTSC, our community is the NSF CI projects. This is the group we are serving, but in order to do that, we have to interface with a number of universities, and we have to address the individual needs of those institutions' security requirements. Also, there are contractual and non-contractual companies that are being used for server and storage supply. Finally, the main question is, what are the key assets? What are we trying to protect the most? This information falls out of an understanding created by gathering all of the preceding information. The characterization showed us there were three things we were most concerned about. Sensitive information. While CTSC does not handle any formally classified information, it may handle information from collaborators that is private by request of those collaborators or deemed sensitive by CTSC. Private information. As stated, CTSC does not handle any formally classified information. In the course of collaborations and normal business, it may have information that is not intended to be public. Public Communications CTSC operates a website, blog, and Twitter feed. Compromise of these assets would be embarrassing to CTSC as a cybersecurity organization. Integrity of these assets is very important. The majority of this information is stored in third-party equipment. 
but there are also drafts of much of it being stored on individuals' personal computers. This is presented a case study of the risk assessment done by CTSC on CTSC. In the following videos, we will continue this case study. This process can be used by NSF CI groups to perform their own risk assessment and development of a cybersecurity program. If you would like more help with building a security system, please contact CTSC. You can get contact and other information on the CTSC website, trustedci.org. CTSC Online is made possible by funding from NSF, grant number OCI 1234408.